I was giving a guitar workshop recently in Austin, Texas, and uh, one of the participants there asked me uh, how she could spice up her finger picking. Uh, she's a songwriter and uh, she plays a lot of her songs finger style. So I asked her to, to play me uh, a couple of songs so I could get a, an idea of, of what she was doing now and you know see if there was something I, I could suggest. Um, and what I noticed was that her picking patterns were just very kind of on the beat. You know, so very kind of, um, kind of like clockwork, kind of, and uh, really beautiful and totally supported the songs that, that she was writing and there was nothing wrong with anything that she was doing, but she was asking, you know, how uh, she might spice things up. And so when I when I hear somebody playing in that kind of way, one of the things that I like to suggest is uh, thinking about a bar of four four time as eight eighth notes, right? One and two and three and four and so that's eight little events. One one and two and three and four and right and uh, and then to to make things a little more interesting instead of chopping those up into even numbers like uh, two groups of four or four groups of two or something like that to think about an asymmetrical uh, uh, thing of, of like three three two so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and right so another way to, to count that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And that uh, getting off of the, you know, real kind of, you know, clockworky uh, marching thing um, uh, gives each measure uh, uh, some push and pull. Uh, if you think of a bar of four, four time, you know, four and four, there's this kind of imaginary mid bar line that if you go one and two and three and four and one and two and three, then um, that imaginary bar line just stays where it is. But if you did like, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, I don't know. I don't know if I did that right, but you get the idea. You're kind of like rippling that mid bar and it gives the music a nice uh, uh, sense of, of propulsion. Um, so that's a good place to start. Uh, I'm doing something, I, I haven't done too many like this, maybe never or just rarely. I'm doing a guitar tip with no guitar. Uh, I just want you to imagine this. There'll be a part two of this video where I'll have guitar in hand and I'll, I'll demonstrate some of this. But for right now, I just want you to, to think about this concept. Um, you may not have your guitar in your hand or, or you may, either way, um, I just want you to get the idea. So um, I'm gonna play, this is just a little basic drum thing. So here's three, three, two. And you could count it as I am right now as uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, or a more typically, uh, you know, musical way to count that would be one, two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so, so that's where those accents are happening. But for this lesson, I do want you to think three, three, two, because we're, we're going to play with that a little bit. So think about what that might be like if you were finger picking uh, two, three, four. It could be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. On whatever strings you like, whatever chord you, you want to play. But that's the idea. Three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two right? Um, of course, you can rotate that. And, and what I mean is instead of it being three, three, two, 
could be 323 three, or even 233. Three. So let's let's hear what those are. Feel what those feel like. Three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And then um, the third rotation with just the two in front. Two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And so again, that could be one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. <laughs> anyway, uh, you get the idea, I hope. So those are what I call rotations of this uh, elemental uh, 332 thing. It could be 332, it could be 323, it could be 233. Um, once you get the hang of that, you can also rotate it further so that, um, you know, the I... You could think of that three three two thing as starting um, on every possible eighth note. So you, you could you could displace it by one eighth note and start the three three two thing on uh, the and. Of, I'll show you. What I mean. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. You could, you know what I mean? So you, you could start that. There's really eight different places. Uh, three of them wind up uh, in a kind of simple form, you know, three, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, three. The other ones, you, you can't just speak them like that because they're starting on uh, other places. Is that a lot? Is that a lot of information? You might wonder, okay, well, what is, what is the, what are we doing? Why, why does that, why does any of this, you know, are we, are we just playing with math or, or can we really make music? So I'll show you in part two of this, how to, how to make some, uh, how to make some, some music out of it with, with guitar in hand. But I just want you to, to experiment with this, um, you know, with finger picking. If you're not a finger picking person, this could be even strumming, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two you know just putting those accents as as you as you play one chord or changing chords or whatever try the try the three uh kind of prime uh possibilities first before you start experimenting with with the with the more odd rotations but you know whether you're strumming or finger picking play with that and also listen to music i I think of this kind of thing a lot when I'm trying to come up with a part of, if somebody sends me a track to overdub on, or if I'm at a rehearsal and I'm, I'm doing a song that doesn't have a set guitar part and I'm, I'm looking for something to play. Um, before I start playing the guitar, I might just let a few bars go by and listen and see if just in my mind, not, not actually on the guitar, but just in my head, if, if I can, imagine that one of those three prime uh, uh, accent uh, rotations could do something cool with the music. Uh, you know, either help it lock in or, or help it feel uh, a little bit more push and pulls. Sometimes when we're playing rhythm guitar, we're just really trying to get it to feel you know, locked in and, and grooving and, um, you know, no question about where the beat is. Other times we're trying to like kind of ricochet off of, of something else and help the music have a, have a, a more multi-dimensional character. Um, so, so 
you know, listen to some music and, and see if you can imagine what you might add on the guitar in that way. Um, if, the, if you're listening to music that already has guitar, see, see if, if somebody might already be doing something like that. Lots of music has accent patterns in Afro-Cuban music. Uh, this is called a, a clave. The, these particular rhythms aren't part of, uh, they're not necessarily part of a, the, the traditional Afro-Cuban clave. So I'm, I'm mixing concepts to, to be clear, but the general concept of clave in Afro-Cuban music is that you have uh, accent patterns that will carry through possibly an entire song or at least uh, uh, an extended uh, passage of a song and that that informs everything that goes on you know in the same way that we might um, think about uh, modal music okay this this song or this passage of the song it's all Dorian or uh, uh, you know, it's all based on dominant chords or whatever. You know, there's there's harmony, there's there's scales. Uh, music can also be driven by these kind of accent patterns, and um, so just listen for that. Uh, a, a few days ago, I, I posted uh, some kind of like backing tracks that that I like to use when I'm practicing. Go and and listen to Nate Smith's drumming and see if you can notice where the accent patterns are, or if you could imagine superimposing your own accent patterns. Listen to uh, Emily King's uh, instrumental record, which um, the guitar playing is a guy named uh, Jeremy Most. And he's doing a lot of stuff where he's accenting certain beats within his parts. So see if you can start to notice that stuff in music and also imagine how you might add it to music. Okay, that's that's the tip for now. Uh, I'll do a, a second part to this uh, later this month. Uh, in the meantime, let me know if you have questions. If you want to send me a video, uh, that would that would be great. Um, okay, there you go.